Good. Okay, wait. Go. <laughs> All right, here we're going to start in three, two, one. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sports Medicine Broadcast, episode 48, Catching Some Z's with Dr. Bird for April 10th, 2013. <laughs> Our special guest is Dr. Michael Bird from Memorial Hermann Sleep Centers. He is an assistant professor at UT Houston uh, and have been in the profession for about 10 years. Uh, if you want to join in with us today, you can go to Today's Meet or the Ustream uh, social or sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash live, and then you can jump in the comments there. Daisy should be able to see those. Uh, one of our computers is down, so Crystal won't be managing that, so Daisy hopefully can manage those today too. But um, Or you can do it on Twitter, because I think Kaylin's watching Twitter, right, oh, Kaylin? Yeah. All right, so you can do it on Twitter at PHS Sports Med. So, of course, I am your host, Jeremy Jackson. With me today is Crystal's back here, sitting in her normal position with a broken computer. And then... Daisy. Claudia. Susie. Monica. Leslie. Priscilla. Priscilla. All right, there you go. Kaylin. And then, of course... Dr. Bird. All right. So we typically like to start the show with uh, a little warm-up. And uh, we're going to start off with our normal warm-up, and then we'll move to the sp uh, theme-specific warm-up. So, Daisy, what would you eat for breakfast? Um, biscuit and apple juice. Just a biscuit, or did it have sausage in there, too? Sausage. All right, good. So, school breakfast? Yeah. All right, good. Claudia? Cereal with bananas. What kind of cereal? Uh, Cheerios. Nice. Honey nut. Nice. Uh, apple. Apple. Susie, you're going to have to get closer to the mic when you... An apple with water. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Dr. Bird? Sausage and a bagel with some orange juice. Nah, good, good. Monica? I drink coffee. Drink coffee. Okay, it's better than nothing. Better than nothing, but... Uh, the school's breakfast. All right, sausage biscuit? Yeah. Orange juice, apple juice, yes. milk? Yes, orange juice. Nothing. Priscilla? Nothing. Oh, okay, <laughs> then. Well, like, this is my first thing that I eat today. A chocolate bar. Is it dark chocolate at least? No. Nope. Oh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we also have uh, the physician liaison, uh, Mr. Richard Solis. He's the one that I contacted about getting Dr. Bird here, and he's been uh, real helpful. So I want to thank him. Uh, you could maybe see him in one of the camera shots. I'm not sure. If not, then he said he just wants to kind of be in the back and uh, support all of us, all of what we're doing here today. All right, so Claudia already kind of talked about how much she slept last night. Last night I went to bed about 11 o'clock after reading on my Kindle, so I wasn't reading on the computer, uh, and then woke up, I don't know, early in the morning. Susie, that's loud. And then, well, I don't know, woke up, I guess around 6, something like that. But I know my son came in the room about three times last night, so my wife didn't get much sleep, so I probably got about seven or eight hours of sleep, maybe, maybe seven hours of sleep. Daisy? Uh, I fell asleep at 10. Woke up at? Five. All right, so in the middle of this, did you wake up to text or, or anything like that, anybody? Oh, I woke up at one because my dog was barking. All right, so 10 to five, roughly? Yeah. Okay. All right, about how many hours you got, Claudia? I fell asleep at six and woke up at six, <laughs> so 12. <laughs> All right, so you got to get 12 hours, but last night, or the night before, you only got, like, four? Three and a half, yeah. Nice. Susie? Um, I really don't know what time I went to sleep. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Were you texting? No. Were you playing on games on the phone? No. You just don't know? What time did you go to bed? I don't know. All right. All right, Dr. Bird, what about you? Ooh, um... I went to bed at about one. Ooh. Staying up late, studying for the show, huh? Nervous? Oh, you, no, well, you know, I mean, I, I, that's, that's, I, have, I, have four, I have four little girls, Ooh. so that's, that's the time that I can actually do any work if I want to get any work done. So it's after they go to bed. Nice. So, yeah. What time did you wake up? Uh, six. Yikes. Ooh, yeah, see, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's not good, guys. But, yeah, All right, we're going to talk about we'll more talk about, about that, that in later. detail. Yeah. Monica. 11.30. Till? 6. Not bad. Leslie? Uh, 11.20 till 6.15. So I got like 6 hours and something minutes. It's about so 11.20 Almost to 6.20 is about Almost 7 seven. hours. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> like it's <at> soup. 
Is that why you're so cranky today? No, that's not why I'm cranky <laughs> okay, today. Okay, well, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Kaylin. Uh, I like 12, and I woke up at 6.33. Cause I woke 6.33? Up late. Nice. <laughs> nice. Not bad. Six and a half hours there. Crystal? 12.30, and I woke up at 4.30. 12.30 to 4.30. So nice four Ooh. hours of sleep. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I win. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you definitely win today. But I took a nap yesterday. Oh, I did too. I think that's why I fell asleep late. Same here. Ah, see, I think I we're going like to address some hour. of those later on. So After school. All right, so before mm-hmm. we get into so much <laughs> much of the uh, the details, we'll talk about all this stuff later. Again, feel free at any time to ask questions. Uh, Claudia, you got it. Give us some background of your hometown and where you went to college. Okay. Um, I'm originally from Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, I grew up there. I lived there for about... 13 years and then my se- actually my senior year in high school we moved to uh, Tyler Texas um, I went to college at Morehouse College in Atlanta Georgia uh, I got my degree in biology so I got a BS in biology um, after college uh, I ended up going to Columbia in New York City uh, where I got my master's in science education so I was up there for a couple of years and then after that um, I actually taught seventh grade environmental science for two years in Virginia. Um, after I finished teaching, that's when I went to medical school. I went to medical school at Morehouse, you know, Morehouse School of Medicine, um, and I completed my residency at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and I did that until I was 06. So um, I started practicing, you know, ear, nose, and throat. I started practicing uh, for a year in Cleveland. And then I went, and then I ended up moving to Albany, New York, and practicing there for four years. And then I got recruited down here. So I've been down here a little over a year and a half. All right. So typically in the in the bio section, I always ask, you know, where you voted most popular in high school or something like that, just to just to kind of throw that out there. And Dr. Bird t- told me he was actually voted most popular in high school, but I didn't need to include that. But I figure since I always ask the guests that, you know, just to kind of get the information and. He was actually the only one that's ever said yes, he was. Dr. Bird was the most popular in high school in Fort Worth. So then what took you to the East Coast? What took me to the East Coast was uh, Morehouse College. Um, it's, actually, you know, it's actually where my father went to school, so I wanted to go to school. I followed, I followed in his footsteps. I actually just looked at two schools. I looked at that school and I looked at Stanford and uh, got into both of them but decided to go to Morehouse. Very cool. Yep. And then you just stayed up there for all the other. I stayed up there for yeah. I went left there, left Atlanta, went to New York, finished that, and came back to Morehouse, and then went back to Cleveland. And so then yeah. with the stint in Virginia. Stint in Virginia, two years. Uh, taught the taught environmental science. Actually, it was it was a nice experience, but I knew I always wanted to go to medical school. Um, I was actually at that time waiting on my wife to finish her prerequisite courses because we went to medical school together. Oh wow! So that's why. I, so during that interim, I taught school. So you went to medical school together. She is not a sleep doctor, is she? She is not. She's general surgery. General surgery. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's a very busy, busy house. Busy house. Well, she does. She doesn't. She, right now, she's not. She just does research. So just to kind of get better hours. Gotcha. So since she can stay we, home with the kids have, more. Right. Since awesome. We have, yeah, since we have the kids. Did y'all meet, like, at medical school? No, I actually met her in graduate school. I met her in New York. We actually lived in the same building. And I actually met her. It's funny. I actually met her on the basketball court. <laughs> we were playing basketball. Who yeah. won? Uh, she won. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she won. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big man right there, admitting it. She won. But ultimately, you won in the end, right? Ultimately, I won. There you go. Yes. Yes. All right, very cool. Can you tell us your story of becoming a sleep doctor? Well, when I went to, uh, when I started medical school, I actually knew nothing about uh, otolaryngology. I knew nothing about ENT. I was actually going to medical school to become an OBGYN. Um, (coughs) And during my first year, uh, my first year of medical school during gross anatomy, during that head and neck module where we're doing head and neck anatomy <coughs> we um we actually had some otolaryngologists come in and do that module with us and that kind of got me interested in the field of ENT um so then you know I, I explored it more 
got interested, actually started doing some rotations in ENT. And that's how I actually got into ENT. Now, you know, how did I get into sleep medicine? Um, well, during residency, I was always interested in um, the surgeries that we did for sleep, you know, for obstructive sleep apnea. Um, and kind of explored it, kind of dibbled and dabbled in residency. Um, but where, where I really kind of got into it was when I was in actually private practice in Albany. Um, actually did some additional, you know, studying and work on learning how to read sleep studies and that kind of thing. Uh, and actually one of my partners was uh, actually boarded in sleep. So that, that's what kind of spurred on that interest. And then it just kind of developed from there. Um, can you describe a normal patient you deal with? A normal patient. Um, typically a patient who comes in to see me for sleep, um, their primary complaint is really daytime fatigue. Uh, they also, you know, typically have their bed partner who complains that they're snoring, that they can't sleep because of the partner. Uh, we'll also have, you know, the, the patients will also complain of, uh, you know, short-term memory loss, difficulty concentrating, irritability, just restless sleep. So that's the typical patient. Um, that's what they typically tell me. Now, as far as just from a physical standpoint, I mean, I see the whole gamut. I mean, I see the patients who are, you know, morbidly obese to, to the patients who are thin as rails. I mean, it just kind of depends. It's just var it's a lot of variation. All right, so I'm not sure if we talk about it later in the show notes, but uh, sleep apnea, mm -hmm. can you kind of talk about that briefly? Um, maybe just a real brief definition and then what mm, causes it? Okay. Um, with sleep apnea, sleep apnea, you can, you, apnea is when you take pauses in your breathing. Um, apnea is when you take a complete pause uh, and hypopnea is when you take kind of a partial pause, but uh, obstructive sleep apnea is when you're actually obstructing your airway while you're asleep. So you're, there's something blocking your airway when you're asleep. Um, and this happens multiple, this happens multiple times during the, uh, uh, you know, happens multiple times during the night. And that's, that's what breaks up and fragments the sleep. And that's what makes, that's what gives you that kind of chronic fatigue. So that's, that's what obstructive sleep apnea is. All right. So something's for some reason making you stop breathing. Yeah. And then it typically wakes you up, right? It wakes you up. Yep. Your body's response to that is, is to try to wake up and go to one of the earlier stages of sleep. So you get out of that. You get out of that REM sleep. That REM sleep is actually restorative sleep. That's the sleep that you need. That's the good sleep. So, but when you obstruct, your body's physiologic response is to try to wake up. And that takes you out of that deeper sleep that you need. So you're never really restoring. You're never restoring. You just become kind of chronically fatigued. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So uh, we obviously we talked about sleep this morning. Uh, we talked about sleep already and then, you know, I asked the question about phones and stuff, but. Can you tell us how phones, TV, and other things affect your sleep? Yes. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I talk to patients about is sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is very important, um, a very important part of sleep. And, you know, as I, when, when patients come in complaining to me about difficulty falling asleep, um, one of the things that I talk to them about is, is having that good sleep hygiene. I mean, you should not, when, you, when you're about to go to sleep, you should not be watching television. You should not be working on your computer, um, you know, because those things stimulate you. That light, you know, from those, those things stimulates you and keep you up. Certainly you want to try to go to bed at a, you know, you, you want to try to do something right before you go to sleep that kind of, where you're kind of winding down, kind of relaxing. And then once you go to sleep, you should go to sleep. Um, and you should try to go to sleep usually around the same, you know, around that same time every night. Um, so those are, some, those are some of the ways that, the, that those things, those things can actually have adverse effects on your sleep if you're trying to sleep. <coughs> All right, so you said uh, doing the same thing. So do you typically go to bed at 1 in the morning? My sleep hygiene is horrible. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm actually a late night person. So, yeah, I will typically go to bed later than you, than you probably normally should. 
And it's just because, I mean, I've been, I've, I've been, my sleep hygiene has been bad for a long, long time. And it's kind of become kind of routine for me. I mean, certainly I get more sleep now that I'm out of residency and done training and that kind of thing. So I can kind of control when I wake up. Um, but, I, you know, I usually try to wake up at the same time. The, the, the bedtime varies. Um, but I try not, I try not to go. I, I usually try to go to bed at about midnight. The one o'clock was just kind of an unusual thing last night. Yeah. All right. So I've heard uh, blue light is supposed to stimulate you to keep you awake, mm-hmm. and that's like what the most of the screens are. Mm-hmm. Are I- explain that because I mean, is it just if it it's looks just, blue? It's just the light, man. I mean, that light, that light gives you it stimulates your brain. Um, it's just one of those things, and, and the, bl- the the blue light, yeah, blue light specifically, yeah, will stim- you know give you that stimulation. All right, so next to my next to my bathroom, I have a night light, and it has a blue and a green. So mm-hmm. should I switch it to green so that if I go into the bathroom under the light, I'm, it doesn't I'm, wake me up? I'm gonna tell you, yeah, you probably want to switch it to the green. The only thing though, with night light, night light isn't that bright. Right. I mean, it's really the bright, that real bright blue light that you see on the screens, on television screens, and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you, you're switching it to green would not be a bad idea. Certainly. All right. Yeah. Like our Twitter and our Facebook has blue on it. Everything right. has blue. Everything on it. has blue on it. That's right. That's why you should not do that before you go to sleep because that's stimulating you. Oh my God. It's a yeah. big thing though. I'm so, so on that about how Is long? That blue light. About how long? Like an hour before they go to bed. So if they're going to go to bed at eleven, like ten o'clock, shut the phone off. Yep. Oh, Give at least at least an hour. Um, you know, at least an hour. I, I, I tell my patients, you know, a couple hours, you know, to try to just kind of wind down. Mm-hmm. Do you think y'all could manage a couple of hours without no. Facebook, Twitter, no, phone? Yep. The last thing I do on <laughs> Twitter <laughs> is like, good night. Good night. And I'll put it on Twitter and then I'll go to sleep like five minutes later. All right. So, so what if they do that? What, it, what happens if she, she can fall asleep, you know, five minutes after saying good night to Twitter? I mean, it, it really kind of depends on how long it takes her to fall asleep. You should not, if, if you're lying in bed, you should not stay in bed longer than 20 minutes. Before you fall asleep. Before you fall asleep. So if you're, if you're going beyond that and sitting and lying in bed, staring at the ceiling for an hour, that's bad sleep hygiene. If, if, if you are not asleep within that 20-minute period of initiating sleep, you should get up and go do something else. You should leave the room, get up, and go do something else. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean get back on Facebook or oh. Twitter or that kind of <laughs> stuff. I mean, it means going and doing something that's kind of relaxing. And then you try to reinitiate sleep, you know, when you get tired again. But you should not. Lying in bed is bad. Bad sleep hygiene. What if we, like, go to the living room and sit down and watch TV? Nope. You should not <laughs> watch it. Nope. You shouldn't watch TV. I mean, you should do something that's kind of relaxing. Go walk around. Yeah. Walk you should, around. You shouldn't, go eat. Yeah. You shouldn't. <laughs> that gets into a different problem, but um, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't eat either. Uh, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, right. let, me, let me not say that. You, 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 you can snack because there certainly are certain foods that stimulate sleep, but I mean, you shouldn't go eat a full meal. So no walking over yeah. to Taco Bell. You shouldn't go eat a full meal at one o'clock in the morning. That's how I am. I'll be like, That's let's go I get some food. No. Let's go to McDonald's, guys. All right. So what I could probably take from that is if, like, on the Kindle. It's a it's a white. The Kindle's tumble. a white light. Yeah. yeah, and so you know I could sit and read that. Um, so, on that note, what if I sit and read my Kindle for thirty forty five minutes in bed before I go to sleep? That's bad. I should you, get out of sit you, on the couch and do it, and then you should be in a completely different room. I mean, read, I know a lot of people read in bed, but you should your 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 bed should just be for sleeping. You should not have a television in the room. You shouldn't you shouldn't have any of that kind of stuff in the room. You shouldn't have stimulants in the room hmm. so yeah i have a tv but i only turn it on like once or twice a month i don't like watching tv same here at all but do you do it right before you go to bed no, no i'll do it if my friends are around because they want to watch tv same. and i don't watch it i'll just sit there you're just kind of hanging out yeah, it's just hanging there like i don't really turn it on i don't have a control it's in the living room i don't use it no. <laughs> all right so no tv see we don't have a tv in our bedroom but i have been you know, I have books right beside the bed, and I usually read before I go to bed. But so it's something I should probably, you know, sit in the. You should, yeah, you should sit. Room. You should sit in the living room and do, yeah, yep. All right. So on the, kind of on the same topic, uh, what about temperature and sleep? 
because um, so you know what? I would. Really I think we had the house set at seventy three for the AC, mm-hmm. and so, do you think that the colder temperatures are better to help you sleep, stay asleep, or? I think that you know, um, you know, they talk about, you know, with sleep physiology, they talk about why you know when you're an athlete and you work out and you sweat, and you get cool, you cools the body off, and then that helps people. That kind of helps people sleep. So yeah, the cooler, the you know, the cool temperatures. At least from literature, um, you know, are are pr- are good for sleep. You know, you just want to be comfortable. I mean, that's what I tell patients. I mean, there's no set, you know, set temperature that's the perfect temperature right. for sleeping. But I mean, you want to be comfortable. You know, because if you're too hot, what's that going to do? That's going to make you wake up. Mm-hmm. So you just want to be comfortable. Gotcha. So you're telling us not to lay in our bed unless we're going to sleep. <laughs> Basically, I, I'm telling you, yeah, that's <laughs> sleep hot. Why? Yeah. <laughs> okay, because this is what I do when I go home. I go home, I, I change, I lay down, and we take and a nap. Sometimes I take a nap. If I don't take a nap, then I'll just lay there and Twitter, and then I'll slowly start to fall asleep. So then I just go to sleep. Yeah, that's bad sleep hygiene. Really? And then I wake up. Yeah. I eat. I go back in my room, lay down, and get on Twitter for probably three more what hours, about <laughs> and then I go to sleep. <laughs> What about that's like that's wait, wait, like after school? Oh well, uh-huh. yeah. I guess I get tired of just like having to concentrate in school all the time, sure. and then I get home and I want to take a nap. I'll take like a thirty or forty-five minute nap, and then I wake up by myself. Okay, My I mean napping. You know, napping is not bad. It's not. Uh, it's not bad. I mean, the the one thing that you worry about if you get too much napping is throwing off your circadian your rhythm, yeah, your sleep yeah. cycle. I mean, so that's 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 one of the things that you kind of have to kind of watch out for. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be awake all night. You don't want to be awake all night. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna <laughs> nap, what I tell Peyton, if you're gonna nap, I mean, you should probably nap like earlier in the day. Don't nap close to bedtime. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. because then you're gonna have a problem falling asleep. I'll nap at school. All right, got it. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, no, not at school. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it yeah, you, you know, you should you should definitely not nap right before you go to bed. All right, gotcha. Yeah. What does it mean if you move a lot in your sleep? <laughs> if you move a lot in your sleep? Yeah, like if it gets too hot in one place, I have to move, and like supposedly I move like all over the place. Like in the I end up half off the bed. Yeah, so that's, that's <laughs> like that's like restless sleep. Oh. So that means that your body, you know, during that during your sleep cycle. You're not you're not in that deep stage of sleep because in the deeper stage of sleep your body's paralyzed. You can't move. Really? Yeah, your body's in, your body's paralyzed. I but there's move. times so where ever like when I did lay down like in a certain way uh-huh. and I wake up like on the side of the bed and I don't feel that I'm moving. Yeah, so that means you're in one of the earlier stages of sleep because that's when your body can move. Oh. So you're not you're not in that you're not in those deeper stages of sleep. If you're moving if you're moving all around, not in the deeper stages of sleep. Like my mom didn't want me sleeping with her like at a really like maybe by the time I was five because I would end up slapping her in mm-hmm. the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes she said I sleepwalk and I don't remember that. You sleepwalk? Oh, oh yeah. I, I started I used to do a couple that. months ago too. I started uh-huh. again. My brother yeah. sleepwalks. Okay. One time he was like he came in the living room and we had friends over and he was like I'm gonna go get the pillow. And he was trying to walk outside, and I was weird, like, what are you doing, dude? Oh my <laughs> so God. what about what about sleepwalking, since we're talking yeah. about that? I mean, sleepwalking, I mean, that's something, that, you know, certainly you need to, you need to see somebody about sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> I fell like down the stairs, I mean, and I don't feel it. I woke up with a bruise yeah, right here, and I didn't I'm feel saying, it. Because you can injure yourself sleepwalking. She yeah. had to carry me upstairs. Yeah. I mean, she, she, you need to see somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I got Dr. Bird's card yeah. right here. Yeah, you need to see somebody for that <laughs> one. So I heard that... Um, an average of hours of sleep you need is eight. Is that true? You want to get anywhere from six to eight hours. Oh, so six uh, hours is six, good? Six to eight hours, yeah. That's mm. kind of like the range. Okay, six yeah, to eight six hours. Six to eight hours. Yeah. So I think most of you were in it. Some of you were short. Some of you were well over Some it. of you were short? Yeah. <laughs> She's like falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, Chris was over here falling asleep. She didn't have a job today. How come when I eat, if I eat like a lot, like I'm like, oh, and then like I finish eating, and I'm like full, and I'm like, oh, and then I just I'm fall asleep. Tired. Like, yeah. Oh. Certain foods have they have an amino acid called tryptophan. Uh, and tryptophan prom- actually promotes sleep. So it, it kind of depends on what you're eating. Uh, and the the other thing that you also have to remember is like when you eat, what happens? What happens physiologically? Your body starts to 
kind of you know all the other functions kind of go down while you're increasing function in your GI system you understand so that's you know that, that sometimes will make you a little tired but depending on the foods that you eat sometimes that sometimes those foods will make you tired because mm -hmm. they have that tryptophan is it true that an apple will make you tired Apple? No. no. That's just in what? Snow no. White or Cinderella? I don't know, that's but... Like, yeah, that was like Snow White. <laughs> Sleep no. me, I think. Uh, somebody oh. told me that. My dad told me to do that. that. So yeah. now I do that when I can fall asleep. What, Apple? Yeah. Yes. Supposedly an apple makes you, like, sleepy. Now, things like, you know, they talk about warm milk. Well, mm. milk has a lot oh. of... Oh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's nasty. I'm I don't just like saying, milk. milk, you don't have to warm it, but milk has... Mm. <laughs> milk has... Milk has... <laughs> food, you know, milk, nuts, seeds, honey... You know, those are some Milk of the things. Milk with honey, I'll do that. Talking you know. about being sleepy is making me sleepy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it weird if, like, you're, like, say you're, like, area of, like, teenagers, but you still sleep with, like, a little thing next, like, you have to cuddle with it? <laughs> I mean, that's not weird, no. Mm. All right. Because no. I can't weird. sleep without it. What, what, what do you cuddle with? A <laughs> little... Monkey. Little monkey. <laughs> 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 that's not weird. That's no. fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I sleep with my pillow pet. I thought I had. Yeah, we do. You have a pillow pet. Yeah. Okay. I have three. That's okay. All right. It's okay. No, 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 no. I, I don't have one. I have three. Oh, you have three. Me too. Oh, 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 there's a problem. <laughs> okay. That's okay. That's all right. I have my little I brothers. Have I have a Lion King. A pig. You have Lion King. Yeah. I, no, I have a pig. She has Lion King. Oh, you have Lion King. Okay, okay. Nice. Oh, you I have know all kinds clocks of that go... T -t 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 -t. Some people can't sleep with that and some people can. Why is that? I mean, it depends on which... You know, it depends on how how, how deep they get into sleep. No, I can mm -hmm. sleep through anything. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're in some of the earlier stages of sleep, you'll hear that. You'll hear the clock. Mm. Yeah. What about light? Is it bad to sleep in darkness? You, you should No, you should sleep in dark. Light, light is stimulating. I okay, can't sleep. I, can't I have sleep eight with windows light. in my room. Whatsoever. My okay. windows are tinted. That's how bad it is that I can't wow. sleep with lights on. Well, what about when you said you fall asleep at school? Yeah. Oh, oh that's yeah. just because I haven't slept. Mm. Same that's here. just because I haven't slept. This is the only place that I can fall asleep with light on. Like, we have a hallway, and my room is, like, right there, and the light is really bright, and everyone mm -hmm. likes to turn well, it on. Well, we get, we get tired screaming. of, the, like, the teachers talking. Yeah, yeah that's true. Giving us speeches all day. Of course we're going <laughs> to fall asleep. And then Dr. Bird just told you it was okay to take a nap during school, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay all right so hey, definitely i love the conversation uh but i do want to ask some stuff about athletes since we are athletic trainers uh priscilla has that one how might an athlete sleep needs differ from a non-athlete um athletes sleep needs actually should be about the same as just a you know regular person off of the street i mean the one thing that i, I caution athletes you know about is not exercising, you know, giving themselves at least a three to four hour window before bedtime. I mean, after you, you should complete your exercise, you know, whatever routine you're doing three to four hours before you go to bed, because exercise again can stimulate you, you know, make you not make you have difficulty falling asleep. Um, certainly athletes need to go on and get, you know, any that six to eight hours of sleep, because again, they're, you know they're training and you want you want that restoration you want you want that but your body to kind of rejuvenate and you need to get that six to eight hours of sleep for that to happen so they should not be taking you know they should not be you know sleeping three or four hours you know a night they should they should really get good, you know some good sleep you know how you said that for them to to stop their exercising for like three hours before they go to sleep mm -hmm. how is it that my niece and nephew are always running around, and once they're done playing, they fall asleep. Oh, little kids? Yeah. You know, kids. <laughs> That's what I am. It's not the same energy. Kids, I mean, they fall asleep at any time. <laughs> I mean, but they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, with kids, their sleep requirements are a little bit different than, you know, somebody older. So it's different from the, for them yeah. than for us? Mm -hmm. They just they, they need more? They need more sleep, yeah. They actually need more sleep. Oh. Yeah. I'd be like, you need some sleep, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> But the room, they sleep any time, though. They don't have, like, a set. Yeah, they, they just sleep fall a lot. Asleep. Yeah, they sleep a lot, though. Yeah, the, probably the majority of their day is sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they need more sleep. So little kids. So then. since we're on little kids, you got any tips for me and my wife? Because our, our 
two and a half year old. <laughs> they don't sleep. Sometimes, <laughs> he'll, sometimes he'll sleep through the night, but like last night he came in three times. So is there something something we can do to help? You know, we had a normal bath, yeah, and yeah. then we read and pray and sing, and then tuck him in, and he falls asleep. But anything? I mean, the routine is good. Definitely keep the routine going. Um, but there's no there's no magic bullet, man. No. Lock them in the closet. Unfortunately, no. no <laughs> with, with, you know, ha, you know, with 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 kids, two year olds, there's no. I mean, you just you keep them on their routine, and, and, and you know, majority of the time they'll stick to that routine. It's true, cause my niece is yeah. she's three. She just turned three, and at school they put her to sleep like I think around twelve. Yeah. And she does that even on the weekends. She does She'll it on the weekend. Yeah, that's become part of their routine. Yeah, it's yeah. so weird. I see yeah. that she sleeps during the same time that she sleeps at school. She falls yeah. asleep at home. Exactly. You want to <laughs> keep that routine. And um, it actually becomes deviate from that routine because it confuses them. Yeah. No yeah. wonder my sister she gets mad. She's like, "Don't wake her up because then yeah. she won't no, sleep no, no, no. You need to. That's right. That's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> you need to keep them on that routine. And that's how she has my nephew too. After school, he has to take a nap. He has to and take a nap. nap. Right. I mean, and as they get, you know, as kids get older, you know, that nap time, you know, and and, and again, there's a age range. I mean, that nap time will disappear. Because they, their sleep requirement won't be as much as they needed when they were younger. Mm -hmm. It still exists for me. <laughs> <laughs> still exists. <laughs> <laughs> for real. I have, to go to, I have to take a nap every day. I used to be like that at the beginning of the school year, but then I stopped because I oh, work. At the beginning of the school year, I was You're really so mature tired. now. I fall asleep at work, though. It's not mature. No, that's not. Um, my dad goes and he turns on the, the air for me, so I mean, I might as well go to sleep, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you work with your dad. It's yeah. a little bit different. <laughs> Child labor there. Yeah, he lets me sleep. All right, so any other questions about kids and sleep? We'll get to them later. All right, so my wife thinks that I should do a sleep study. Um, you know, I I have trouble falling asleep. I might lay in bed or in it for a while. Uh, maybe I'll try doing some of the things you talk about. Go to a different room, come back when I feel really sleepy. Um, or I'll, I'll feel tired a lot of times. Like I have restless sleep. Like I'll wake up three or four times during the night mm -hmm. um can you talk about a sleep study and, and kind of what happens there um with the sleep study basically what you're doing you're actually uh you know depending on where you're doing because now we're doing home sleep studies and we're doing sleep studies in the sleep lab um typically you get hooked up to you know hooked up to the machine to monitor the number of apneas the number of hypopneas your oxygen saturation um, if you're in a in a, in a in a you know hospital lab or a you know comprehensive sleep lab, I mean you'll get hooked. You know, they'll monitor how many times you're kicking your leg, how many times you're snoring. You know, looking at your heart rate to make sure the rhythm is okay. Um, and you basically spend the night, and there's somebody there watching you sleep. Uh, and then they record all those things that you're doing during sleep. They record the different stages. They record your oxygen blood level. They record your number of apneas, number of hypopneas per hour. They record all of that while you're asleep. All right, so you're hooked up to all sorts of different monitor sensors. Do they uh, come into the room? Are they sitting in the room or they're watching no, through like a, a monitor? Video. It's a video, man. They're, they, I mean, they hook you up initially. Right. And then you go to sleep and they're watching on the video. They're watching you sleep on the video. What if you can't sleep while they're watching? Is it a creepy room? No. All right, hang on, Kayla first. What if you can't sleep when they're watching you? Like I would feel really weird to be like, people are watching me. Well, you, I would stay awake. You know, I, you know, believe it or not, out of all the patients that I've, you know, have done sleep studies for me, I mean, some of them say, yeah, you know, it was a weird room, not going to be able to sleep in there, blah blah blah. But they all, they all go to sleep. <laughs> they all fall asleep. Um, they all go, no, I mean, really, they all go to sleep. I mean, and certainly there is. Um, what we call first night effect that takes into to account some of that variability because we know it's a new environment. But um, I mean, all the ones that I've sent, they, I mean, they come back with a sleep study. You know, full night, so they fall asleep. What's the room look like? It's like crazy. a like a hotel room. Yeah, I've seen it. Looks like oh, a hotel. oh, you know what I pictured? I pictured like. All these cables, a black room, room. Like, and like a white room. bed hospital with nothing room. around you. No, no, no. It's like <laughs> it's, it's a very, yeah. it's a very, it's a very nice room. Is it? Mm-hmm. My stepdad did one. It looked really comfortable. Yeah, it's a very nice room. Yeah. That sounds nice. I shall go and say I can't sleep, even though I can. <laughs> All right. So then that takes us to the next question. What would qualify someone for a sleep study? 
um, have to be evaluated uh, and have to actually have some of the criteria met to kind of justify getting a sleep study. The daytime fatigue, the snoring, witnessed apnea, um, you know, short-term memory loss, difficulty concentrating. I mean, some of those things, those are the things that we look for. I mean, certainly you do your physical exam and look for certain, th you know, certain things that might make you think that they're obstructing. Um, but you have to be initially, you have to be evaluated. That's what it comes down to. Got to be evaluated by somebody who, you know, does sleep medicine to determine if you need a sleep study. So is it bad to snore? Is it bad to snore? People the, say I snore. You snore? But not like, <gasps> like all loud. Like people, they're like, <laughs> like <that. laughs> yeah. I don't snore like that. You snore like, like that? I um, breathe. I breathe really heavy because sometimes I can't breathe at night. Like I don't know. It's weird. Really? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and she might need to come on in. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I you people. might need to. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, snoring. All snoring is. All snoring is is vibrating tissue. Um, snoring is not going to cause any. I mean, it doesn't cause any other medical problems. Certainly, you know, if it's vibrating too much and, it, and if you don't have enough tone, that, that tells you that you don't have enough, like, en enough muscle tone in that tissue. So then what you worry about is that tissue becoming real lax and obstructing. So snoring can be seen in probably about 70% of the people with obstructive sleep apnea. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have it. But about 70% of the people do have it that snore. Sometimes I hear my, my mom or my dad snore. And then all of a sudden it stops, and uh -huh. I'm like, oh, my God, did they, they stop breathing? They're pausing. That's yeah. so weird. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can hear them, so I close my door, I lock it. I don't want nobody coming in my room when I'm sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I have, well, like, you know, a really, really, really quick, quick question. Sure. Okay, can, like, the color of the room affect? Well, it's going to be dark. Yeah, so. it's No, white. but, like, I know. So what color is your room? Like, my, my room is yellow, but, like, I go in my room and I get really sleepy. Everybody does. Like, they say they walk in my room and that they get sleepy. <laughs> I mean, you know, certain colors are soothing, but do certain, I mean, is you know, is a yellow room versus a, a red room going to make you sleep better? Doesn't red make you hungry? <laughs> That's why, like, <laughs> like Raising Cane's is all red. Uh -huh. There's all their other, they said that. Chick-fil-A. Yeah. The, and they said no, that white, like beige, the way the classrooms are, I don't know why just, they make them white. Supposedly it does something to make you concentrate. Makes you concentrate more. Yeah. yeah. If no, you write on there, blue paper, I don't concentrate. I doze off. <laughs> no, there is some science behind different colors. I mean, I, you know. Yeah, but, what, but, but what's funny is that it's like bright yellow. It's not light yellow. It's like really bright yellow. <laughs> bright like, yellow. Yeah, it's just like the sun makes you close Yeah. Like school bus yellow. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why they get sleepy when they walk into that room. I don't room. know either. That's what I'm trying yeah. to figure out. <laughs> How do you dream or like have nightmares and stuff like that? How do you dream? Like, like, what, why? what makes it why happen? Do you dream? Sometimes, like, if I dream and then, like, something happens, I'm like, I've seen this in my <laughs> dream. Me too. It's so scary. And then sometimes happens. I wake up, but I don't really dream right, that much, but when I do, it's like... <laughs> so why do you dream? Yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody really understand. They don't have a full understanding of why people dream. Because some people dream and some people don't. Um, we know that, you know, we know that dreams occur in those deeper stages of sleep. But I can't tell you why you dream about certain things. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you know, is it because of something that you experienced during the day? I mean, you know, possibly, you know, that has yeah. an effect, you know, effect upon what you dream. Sometimes I feel like I see the future because I see it in my dreams. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I've seen this before. <laughs> like I went to the air one, one time I dreamed it was like a long time ago. I probably was five, and then I went to the air show and I saw a fence, and I was like, wait, I've seen that before. <laughs> and I was like, am I raving? I was like, am I raving? <laughs> I even did that thing. I was like, wait. <laughs> All right, Dr. Bird, I know this sounds a little bit crazy, <laughs> but you're possibly one of the most uh, interactive guests that we've yep. had. Yeah. Usually, usually they're reading the script and, and stumbling over the words on the script. <laughs> this time we're barely even covering the questions on, on the here. So I, I want you to know that this is very good that you're hardly having a chance to talk because they really want to know what you have to say, but they got to learn to listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I'm going to tell you. Um, you're not that poor Raven. It's, in, it's interesting that you have those kind of dreams. You think, you know, you're seeing the future. I, I don't have an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that too. Uh, I, 
weird. I don't know. It's weird. You just tell, that's what I was gonna say. You tell me the lotto numbers <laughs> when you have that, so I can you know win the lotto. And when I have nightmares, I wake up sweating and I'm like I cry yeah. sometimes because it scares me. Now I'm nightmares, yeah, nightmares, you know, certainly can cause you know some of those physiologic responses. You can wake up sweating, <laughs> wake up crying, those kind of things. Yeah, because those are you know traumatic. Mm. No question. Traumatic. Yes. My dad told me not to sleep before I go to sleep because I will have nightmares. Is what? that true? Sleep sleep before before I, go to I mean, no, wait. Oh. Eat before I sleep. <laughs> 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 my bad. I was too, too anxious to answer um, my question. You know, that's, that, you know, they talk about, you know, certainly, you know, if you, you eat, you know, you eat certain, like they used to talk about, oh, if you eat pork, you're going to have nightmares. Oh, yeah, I heard mm-hmm. that. Like, I mean, there's no science behind that. Um, mm. Is it coincidental? Maybe. I mean, but there's no. I mean, if you eat pork, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have nightmares. If you eat before you go to sleep, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have nightmares. Certainly, it might affect you going to sleep. Well, he said it because supposedly he said that your body's trying to like digest your food yeah. and you're sleeping and it's hard for it to work, so it makes you wake up. Well, so it does. Have. It is. It it it. it you know, when you—that's why you should not eat right before you go to bed because, yeah, your GI system is kind of taken over. That's mm-hmm. becoming the primary system that's on versus you. You're you're you're, you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it can it can definitely affect your sleep and fragment your sleep. Now, I mean, certainly there are foods. I mean, you shouldn't eat fatty foods. We know that fatty foods, you know, uh, make, well, they make you fat, <laughs> but they but they they make you not sleep well. And yeah. you said you dream whenever you're in a deep sleep. When you're in deep sleep. It's been like a week that I've been dreaming crazy stuff, but mm-hmm. I've been dreaming. Okay. And I don't dream often, so I'm, I'm guessing yeah. I've been sleeping good lately. Sleep. You've been extra tired? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's so, right. Yeah. I dream yeah. almost every other night. Yeah. Okay. You know how you said whenever you snore, it's like the tissue or something? Tissue vibrating. Well, how come some people fart and some people giggle <laughs> and laugh and stuff like that? I've been uh-huh. told I do. I do all of those things in your that sleep? Personal, yeah. <laughs> My best friend does that. I do. I've been told that. So like, I don't. I don't snore, but I do other stuff. I laugh. I kiss all that. I bite when I sleep. <laughs> I punch. One time. One time. I, I said I was like. Hang on. <laughs> give him a chance to answer. If you ask him a question. Um, you know that's that. You know your 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 GI system is still working. <laughs> 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 When you're asleep, I mean it doesn't cut completely off. Um, so that's probably why. Out. That's why you're doing. It. That's probably why. And then, then you also have to remember, you're, you know, when you get to the deeper part of sleep. Remember, I told you you get become paralyzed. So you relax all the muscles in your body. Doesn't that muscle have to like? <laughs> no, there's actually a muscle. No, no, no. it's a muscle. Oh. It's a muscle that actually oh is closed like that, and then you relax. And it opens up. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> um, I'll I'll first the lessons. I have a question. Oh yes. Do you, have you ever had a patient with Tourette syndrome? Um, yes. What how do that? they do it? How do they like sleep? how do they sleep? Does it still happen in the sleep or um yeah. You know that I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Because uh, I never we didn't talk about sleep. They were they were seeing me for another problem. Um you know, Tourette's is involuntary. You know, could it happen in sleep? I guess it could probably, you know, theoretically probably happen in some of the earlier stages of sleep, but in the deeper stage, no, you wouldn't have a tick because you're paralyzed. But I, I mean, I, you know, that's just me guessing. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I don't see a lot of Tourette's. I got a question. <laughs> yeah. You know how sometimes when you're asleep, and you feel like you're falling off of I don't know what, but you twitch. What's up with that? <laughs> What's up with that? That's why I'm <laughs> testing, babe. I'm sleeping. Yeah, I'm sleeping. I twitch, and I'm like, oh, God, did anybody see that? Like yeah. You, around. And like you wake up before you hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. but I'm really yeah. still in the middle of the bed. Nothing's <laughs> happened. Nothing's changed. I'm in the same place. You know, I don't know why that happens, but it's, I, mean, I hear that commonly. It's like you'll, you know, say you're falling off a building. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you wake and it's up. It's like you wake up right before you hit the ground. Like, oh. And you start, yeah, you jump. <laughs> You're in the middle of the bed with, you know, um, other space. I can't do that in school when <laughs> yeah. I fall asleep. Or I mean, certainly you're, you know, certainly if you if you look at it physiologically, certainly you're probably in one of the, you know, not in not in that deepest stage of sleep when you're having that because you're having some muscle movement. Um, I don't I don't know why people I don't know why I don't know why you never hit the ground. 
I don't know why you stay. Asleep, you don't stay asleep and hit the ground. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um. Yeah, but that I hear that commonly. <coughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I anybody. Right, so Leslie, so next time just focus when you're falling and just, just see fall? what happens. Yeah, just focus. Focus, see, right. yeah, focus, focus and see, like complete it. Right. See what happens. I'm gonna fall. I can't. I'm gonna like, don't say Don't say fall. Homework. Just fall. Yeah, it's your homework. Yeah. What about when you dream and you know you're dreaming, so you're like, wake up, wake up, you're gonna get yeah. killed. Oh like, yeah. wake up. You're scared yeah. or something. I mean, that's right. Yeah, that's probably why. I've been like stuck in a dream up. before. Like, I've I had the same up, dream over and over again since I was little. It's like a scary one. I'm in the same hospital, the same desk, same purple smoke, same. All right, so. I think we're gonna we're gonna move on from dreams. Aww. <laughs> All right. Hi. So, so last night or two nights ago, Claudia said she got like four hours of sleep, and then last night she got like twelve hours of sleep. Can she catch up? Is, is there any, or, or is she gonna be behind now? Or um, <laughs> you know, they, they talk about well, oh, you, you can catch up over the weekend, catch up on the sleep that you've missed. That's a myth. Can't catch up. That sleep is you've lost. You've lost that time. Um, you know, certainly you can try to, you know, again, with sleep hygiene, try to stay on that same kind of pattern, that same kind of routine. Uh, but catching up, you cannot catch up. And actually, you know, what they've, what, they've, what they've also talked about, if you get too much sleep, that's a bad thing. You know, that can make you tired. Mm-hmm. You know, you say, oh, I slept for 12 hours, I slept for 14 hours. It's not good. You're still tired. Yeah, and they say that can cause that can also cause chronic fatigue. So you want to stay, you know, you want to stay within that range of six to eight hours. I noticed once I slept like I think eight or nine hours, and I woke up still tired. And mm-hmm. then I noticed that <clears throat> another day I slept five hours or six, and I woke up and I wasn't tired. I've had that happen before. Yeah. Like, is it bad if like say it's a weekend and you wake up like at one? Or whatever. <laughs> you wake up to eat and shower and everything, but like after that, you still feel like really, really tired. Still tired, yeah. Is that bad? It's not. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It just means that you might not have gotten good sleep the previous night. So again, he's talking about the the rhythm. You're yeah. trying to keep it the same. So you if you always wake up at same. one, yeah, you want to try to keep it the you same. Can't do that. That's cool though. In the summer, <laughs> well, I go to sleep at four. Yes, it really does. Like no, not come be, to school. if you weren't here at school, you wouldn't be talking to Doctor Burton. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so earlier you talked about uh, REM sleep, mm-hmm. um, and that's the really restorative sleep. REM sleep versus non-REM, is there a way to adjust that? Um, there is not a way. Well, let me not say that. You know, normally you get twenty, about maybe about 25% of your sleep, of your sleep, your total sleep cycle is REM sleep, and that's the rapid eye movement sleep. And then the other 80, you know, 75 to 80% of the time is, is the non-REM sleep. Um, you know, and that's, that's pretty typical for everyone. Now, can you alter the, can you alter those percentages? You can. There's certain medications that can alter those percentages. Um, but you try not to because you you know you you want to get you know that you you want to get that rim. Um, but the, again, there's certain medications that can alter the you know alter those. There are actually certain uh, you know other medical conditions that can alter those. Um, and you know when that happens, I mean you, that's what you that's what you got to try to tease out and figure out why it's being altered. If it's not a you know if it's not something that you're trying to do, um, but you really want to try to keep it. You really want to, I mean, really, you want to just have good sleep hygiene and maintain that routine. Yeah. You don't want to try to adjust that. So, I mean, you're going to typically get, if you look at the sleep cycle, you'll typically get more REM as you, as you go through the night. <coughs> All right? So at the, at the end, of, you know, at the end of your total sleep time is when you're going to get the most of, you know, most of your REM typically. You know, that, that, that increases as you go through the night. All right, so I looked at buying one of those. It's like an alarm clock, but it's like a headband thing that is supposed to read when you're asleep. Um, I think it's called Zio Sleeper. I don't know. Um, and and so it's supposed to read when you're in the REM sleep or when like it's the best natural wake up cycle, uh, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to like either vibrate or or whatever within those windows of sleeping. Uh, any idea? You look kind of lost, like you don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> All right. Well, then never yeah. mind. We'll move on from that. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have a question. Does the way you position yourself affect your sleep? It can. 
make because some people sleep like that, some yeah. sleep on their stomach. Yeah. I sleep like. All right, Monica, let's know what he has to say. Yeah, it can. <laughs> um, you know, certainly, you know, people who are, you know, snorers, um, sometimes when they sleep on their backs, it's a bad thing because that tissue falls back there and causes obstruction. Um, you know, if people have big tongues, you know, sleeping on the back, you know, can can potentially obstruct. So, you know, I have patients, I tell them that, you know, when, when that is the case, where, where they are, you know, obstructing when they're lying flat, I actually have them take tennis balls to the back, to their back, in the mid-back, to keep them from laying on their back. Yeah. So, yes, it can, body position can be very important. Okay. Well, at this time, they are about to head to lunch. So, um, don't move yet. Don't move yet. Claudia, will you turn them all down, but the one that says Jay and the one that says Dr. Berg, or it should be guest. I think number three, the one you just turned down. All right, I'll turn all the rest of them down. It should be. That's good. Well, not those two. Not the very last two, just. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> you, you're sleepy now? Do I need to, I need to keep... Yeah, we're going to stay out for just one oh, second. That's okay. right. Okay. I mean, if you want to stand oh, up yeah. and... Yeah, no, it's fine. All right. Oh, no, thank you. are welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye. See you guys. Hi, right, Richard. Do you have any uh, thing you want to jump in? No, I'm good. No? Okay. All right, so the only question that we have on here, I think, that we didn't really cover, um, you know, Z-Quil is kind of new. Uh, the NyQuil oh, over-the-counter. Oh, 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 over-the-counter. Yeah, the over-the-counter. And so I'm going to tell you, man, my, my take on um, sleep aids, I try not to do that. Uh, I try to, I try to again with with behavioral modification, try to get people back to where they need to be as far as their sleep cycle is concerned. Um, you know, one of the other, I mean, I just saw a patient the other day. I mean, she had been on, uh, you know, some sleep aids for like two or three years, and then came off of them cold turkey and now can't sleep. So now we're having to kind of, kind of retrain her. Right. recondition her, which is going to take some time. It's not going to be an overnight thing, um, but, you know, it probably could have been prevented had she come off of the aid. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't use sleep aids. It's not what I'm saying at all. I mean, you can use them for short periods of time, but you should not be on them chronically. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, that was my thought. I was like, you know, I don't really want to take medicine to help me go to sleep, and I want to be able to Go to sleep. The only time yeah. I take NyQuil is if like, I'm sick and you know my nose is running, yeah. making me choke or something. Right. And right. I mean, if you're going to take anything, you can try melatonin. Melatonin. Because see, that's just that's, you. You naturally make melatonin in the body. I mean, but melatonin will help you. You know, help you sleep. All right. All right. Well, I think they covered pretty much everything. Is there anything else you wanted to throw out there? I mean, if, you, if you're if you having any of those symptoms, you just need to, you know, kind of watch it and be aware and get evaluated, you know, because sleep apnea, is, obstructive sleep apnea is one of those conditions that the majority of the time it goes undiagnosed. And when it goes undiagnosed, it can lead to other more severe medical problems on down the line when it's untreated. So, I mean, you need to kind of take it seriously. I mean, it's, you know, People are like, oh, I snore, and oh, I'm not, t- I'm tired. I thought that's, you know, I think that's normal. Well, you know, that's not. I mean, you should, you should have energy, and there has to be a cause. Um, so, I mean, you just want to try to figure that cause out, you know. And and again, if obstructive sleep apnea is the cause, certainly there are treatments out there that, where, you know, where we can help. So, is there, like, for just for example, me, mm-hmm. you know, there are times where I w- wake up and I'm tired, but it's not. I wouldn't even say it's most of the time. Mm-hmm. Like even if I wake up in the middle of the night, but when I when I wake up, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Is that? I mean, if you're not if you're not chronic, you're not that chronically fatigued person. Probably okay because everybody's going to be tired every once in a while. Right. Um, but you know, more importantly, you need to ask your wife how you sleep. 
you know, if you're kicking at night, if you're pausing, you know, with your breathing, those are kind of, those are, those, you know, that's why it's important for the bed partner to come when they're being evaluated for obstructive sleep apnea because there might be things happening in your sleep that you don't know of. Um, but those are some of the questions that you, you know, that you would probably want to ask her. Well, how do I sleep? I mean, I know, I, you know, I was tired today. How did I sleep last night? Oh, well, you know, I saw you, you kept me up because I saw you taking some pauses in your breathing. Well, that's, you know, that's a, that, you know, that needs to be evaluated. Or, yeah, you slept through the night. You were fine. You kicked a little bit. Okay. You know, but definitely, you know, speak to the bed partner. All right. Well, I think she sleeps a lot harder than I do, so I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if that's going to work. Okay. But we'll see. And, and, of course, if she's the one getting up with my son at 3 and 4 and 5 in the morning. She'll be able to see you. She'll be able to see you. She'll be able to see you. All right, so, Sarah, if you're still listening, doctor said you got to get up with Jonah in the mornings, or in the middle of the night. So, don't you know how we can twist those words? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> she may be putting one of them down for a nap right now, so she may not have heard anyways. Okay. <laughs> but she might listen to the recording. <clears throat> All right, Any anything else? I think that's it. All right, again, really, I mean... You could tell how how talkative they were. That was just they were excited. They wanted to ask you questions. They wanted to learn. So even most of the time, whenever I'm teaching, they're they're not that excited. So I would say most of the time when I'm not, when I'm teaching, they're not that excited. So I hope you take it. And you know, you did teach middle school, so yeah, you kinda I, know. I kind of know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that they were interested in what we had to say. So I'm all right, well, I'm gonna close it out. So if you can stick with me for just a second, uh, okay. there's certain people and things, uh, organizations we want to. Give a shout out to ATPE, which is Association for Texas Professional Educators. Uh, they donated a bunch of money so we could buy, you know, the laptop that I'm using and several of the different devices that we use uh, for the podcast. So I want to thank them. The G Hats Greater Eastern Athletic Tra- Trainer Society for offering CEUs for listening to Dr. Bird today. Passing the IHD Education Foundation, which is uh, lots of grants and stuff through there. And then, of course, Memorial Herman uh, for partnering with our school district, but then, uh, giving me the contact stuff for Dr. Bird and, you know, Mr. Solis over there, um, kind of making it, making everything work so we can have, you know, lots of cool guests. We've had Dr. Penny Wilson. We've had Bubba Wilson. We've had uh, Dr. Crumby's going to come on. Now we had, you know, Sleep Doctor, Dr. Bird. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty more. So Memorial Harm is doing great things here, and I definitely want to thank him out uh, for all that. Words of wisdom, I would say with, uh, one of the summaries would be to, have a normal sleep routine, don't watch TV, and if you're in bed for more than 20 minutes, then go do something else, read a regular old paper book or a Kindle, and then go lay back down uh, and try again. All right, if you want to check us out, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com. Uh, most every Wednesday, we're going to be broadcasting live next week. We have the rodeo one, talking about with Jace Duke. Uh, you can watch on Ustream, and then there's all the links on there to join in the conversation. Twitter is PHS Sports Med. Google Plus is Sports Medicine Broadcast. Facebook.com slash PHS Athletic Training. And that'll be just about everything. So for Jeremy, Sports Medicine One Kids, uh, Mr. Solis, Dr. Bird, that's a wrap.